got sick and she's in the hospital, so he's trying to he's trying to deal with it. Oh my God. Had a baby now, her gallbladder on her kidney or something. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Denise knows more. Oh, sorry. Um, we're gonna start the. Wait, wait, uh, I haven't. But you, the camera's without. Oh. The sound is live. Open, you, just, you, you know how to do that? I do. Denise, I think we're. You're on. Okay, so um, we're having an emergency meeting here with the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health. Um, due to the coronavirus, and we're trying to be as public as we can. Um, and I know the health was here first, and you had the 4.30, so we'll start with you. Okay. We have compiled a list of um, statistics. Actually, Claire did it, huh, Claire? Yes. Of the um, number of viruses, and I can't find it, but I have. <coughs> Oh, I do have it. Uh, travel related, 449 cases. Close contact, 539 cases. Under investigation, 32,416. And total cases is 33,404. That is the COVID-19 United States at a glance. Uh, you all know about the, the China and the cruise ships and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to get into <coughs> that. Um, by Essex County, we have 60 confirmed cases. I don't think we need to know the other counties, right? Um, what? Do they, you guys have one? No, that's okay. No, that's oh, right. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. We can that's okay. It Don't worry about it. We the biggest, um, the biggest source seems to be for us for Massachusetts is the Biogen conference. Yeah, those are the uh, biggest related cases that we have. Uh, there's five deaths attributed to COVID-19. There is 71 hospitalized patients. Patients who are not hospitalized but have the virus are. 263 and under investigation is 312. Um, I don't think we uh, need to know about sex. <laughs> uh, there's uh, total positive 362 and total tested 3,403. And I heard on um, Governor Baker's report that there's more testing kits coming in and of course, Quest Lab can test now, and there's another private <coughs> lab that can test now. So, and also uh, is the order from Governor Baker that as of 12 noon tomorrow, yep. all businesses shall be closed. Yep. Except for pharmacies, um, food, mm -hmm. and liquor stores. Right. <laughs> I love gas it. Stations. Oh, gas stations. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That being said, it, it, and my phone's been ringing off the hook, it, and I've gotten it from more construction people. Yeah. And they're saying, is this a definite, um, I wrote it down here as they were calling. Um, What's the date? Stay at home advisory. Is it, is it a definite? It, um, it's not a shelter in place. That's it's it, a, shelter yeah. in place. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Stay no. at home advisory. It's is a it a lockdown order? Um, is no. not mandatory yet, or is it suggested? Suggested. suggested. Okay, but we as a town of Roland want to proceed this as it's more than suggested. We'd like to make it so it's more permanent type I thing. I totally agree. If I can okay. Just say, I thought the governor's um, closing of businesses is not suggested. No, uh, that's an order. That's an order. That's Correct. an order. Staying at okay. home. The stay at home is, is a suggestion. Right. So yeah. that's and what I'm trying even to. Even the six feet right. is a suggestion. So what I'm trying to do is because we're on camera, yeah. I'm trying to resolve the situation where everyone thinks that certain people can go to work. So we need to clarify what's suggested and what isn't suggested so that people understand <coughs> that and somehow get this out. Well, I, I did see in the, I, I looked at a Governor Baker's press yep. release, and yep. it did say that he would let us know later which businesses would be affected. So there's okay. going to be a more detailed list forthcoming. Okay. Right. So right now, people can go out in their yards. Correct. But yeah. they, when they're not to be roaming around the streets and what have you to try and keep it 
to their yards and their homes? Uh, no, because they've said go for a walk. If you've been doing no, what no, you should have been doing all along, you, you continue as usual. It's the people that aren't listening to the group hangouts and the, the fields and the parks right. and all that other stuff that you can't do. Right. 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 If you exactly. go to the grocery store, you go once. You go in and days, you get out. You don't get your stuff and go. Right. 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 Times. Yeah. right. You can right. take your dog for a walk. You can go for a walk right. as a family unit, Correct. but you can't yeah. go for a walk with your 10 neighbors. Right. Right. And, and why would Mark, I mean, Mike just said about the parks. I know in the city of Haverhill, um, I know the police yesterday were having a situation where a lot of people were in our parks. There was more than 10 in the park. They finally had to move the closure up over I here. That, they yeah. actually put a police car there because there were so many of them. I was bored. I did all my chores in a record amount of time, so I was out looking around. <coughs> went to go check a house in Newton that I have. Haver went out and put construction tape around all their swing sets, all their play wow. equipment, Good and they, them. they shut them all off, and they put one sign saying all um, parks are closed. But, I mean, we know people are going to want to do passive recreation. Yeah. Me, personally, and I'm with you guys, I personally think it should get to the point, and Kathy suggested this last meeting, <coughs> we should have the highway, put gloves on, go take the toys, make them take them to the highway garage, put them there, and then maybe we should do what they've done, put construction put tape, tape around the, the, tape, the equipment yeah. Yeah. so that yeah, it's on the equipment. Yeah. So if it is, yeah. it, it is, but we don't know, you know what I mean? Right. So why right. not be more safe? Um, but the reason, one reason I was thinking if this thing here is more you're staying home, you're not leaving. You're staying in your yard, you're not leaving. But if they're still going to be out and they're still going to be in the parks, I think, you know what I mean, we should maybe take one, go one step more. It's up to you guys, what you think. By saying nobody can... I'm, no, I'm saying about the, you know, the, the swing the, sets. Well, yeah, that's already been decided that the, the swing sets in the park are closed. The, so should we have... The basketball courts are closed, the playgrounds are closed, the swing sets are closed. Right. Yeah. If you want to go for a walk down there with your, right. your kid and your dog, that's right. fine. Right. You know, if you want to take a walk around the block with your family, that's fine. Yep. But you're not going to go send your kids down to Shanahan Field and have them play with 10 other kids. That's no. just irresponsible. Right. I totally agree. Totally. So do we need to ask the police to take one more step? I think that's what uh, Don is asking us. I mean, it's up to you. I think every park should have a sign in front of it closed. I believe in that. Just what they did over here. I think yeah. every park should have a sign in front of it now closed. And personally, me, I think we should put ribbon around all the play equipment, take the toys, bring them to the highway, put them away till this is over, yeah. toys out there, and have someone run over. I saw some of the toys at Washington Park in the middle of the parking lot. No way. I mean, they, they, they get left out, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I don't think we should say they can't walk your dog in the park like no, Mike just said, no. but let's just no. say the park is you closed. You should use your head. Common well, sense. That's I think the Mike says they're not, they're not doing it. People they're not. No. <laughs> right. Because yeah. I was following conversations about kids down at Shanahan Field yesterday. Really? When I noticed it, I went down them. there because I was going to confront them because they shouldn't be down there and their parents should be more responsible for their kids and not just try to get them out of the house. So I went down there um, to see who was there and there was nobody there. But it's not the first time that I've seen groups of kids riding their bikes, groups of kids in a car driving around town, groups of kids, you know, on their skateboards. It's just irresponsible. Six feet apart. Yeah. Well, they're not, they're not adhering to it. that um, those extra, those toys that they have around, that they should be removed for the time right. being. And, and if we put the construction ribbon, at least now, you, they, they're going to get the idea. You can go to the park, but you're not going to go on the play equipment and what have you. Mm -hmm. right. So, and I mean, that's just... Oh, go ahead. That opinion only no, I opinion. agree. So he, he had to leave because we have 10 people. Is that why? Yes. Yes. Okay, so everybody that's in this room has to be in this room right now, okay? Yes. So right. We have two. Oh, you're doing. But we're six feet doing. apart. Doesn't matter. It's ten yeah. people in in a room. We can't okay. have ten people gathering together. So if we need to have a conversation with him later, we can we can have it. He was from the FEMA. He's a oh. representative from oh. FEMA. Well, he was our emergency management director. He's not oh, from FEMA. Right. You, Laura, you, you don't need to be here, Joe. He's gonna stay in the hallway and kind of listen. Oh, we don't need to be. <laughs> right. He's over here. Wait, I heard a voice. Joe's gonna get the echo. Oh, okay. All right. So, so just so I know who's here, I'm from. This is. This is Joe Tebow, our uh, health agent. Health agent, yes. I and you know Laurie, our Hello, Laurie, minister. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Yeah. thank you. Make sure I had the minute. Yeah. Thank you. And we're okay. going to check after noon tomorrow to make sure all hairdressers are closed. Okay. All um, nail places are closed. You can't yep. do your nails six feet apart. Yep. And all massage. I think we have one on Salem Street, a massage. Right. Yeah. 
and there's an electrolysis above the printing company. We want that closed. Um, and I think there's a yoga studio. I'm not sure. Yes, there is. There is? I saw it on the way out of town no. in that. Um, on that strip mall? Yes, where Potvin is, where Dr. There Potvin's was. office? If it doesn't move, it was there. Okay. All right. So that we, that's what we're going to do, okay. to make sure all these places that have close contact, like I said, you can't do your nails six feet apart or wash your hair six feet apart. Right. There's no need of them being open. And they should right. all be closed. Right, okay. That makes sense. It does. Okay. Um, let's see if we can go back to what I was trying to do. Do we need to talk about it, or do all of us need to talk about it, as far as the toys in the park, the signs, we start with that. Um, are I you all in agreement with yes, it? Yes, okay. definitely, okay. definitely, okay. yes. So are you in agreement with Mike? You were Bill? unanimous. Signs, yes. one sign in front of each park saying park closed and then put construction a ribbon and get the toys out of Washington and put them up the highway garage. Havel's done it to all their playgrounds. They've put all the swing sets you have construction a ribbon around them because they're saying the virus can be on the metal of the Six equipment. Mm -hmm. Six days, I think. I think it's two. Well, whatever. Whatever. It's more we than don't want to take the chance. Hours, whatever. Right? Yeah. yeah. We don't want to take that chance. Underneath. Almost. You have to hold it longer, I think. Hold so. the bottom. Now there you go. You're green. Oh, cool. <laughs> you had it. Just wait a minute. Maybe I'll go green. There you go. Okay. You're on. I'm on. Um, I don't know. I apologize. I got here later. I had a, a family crisis going on. Um, so I'm not sure what the discussion is. The discussion was that I was suggesting that we put... Like the police had to go over yesterday and move the sign to the front of the park over here because people were still congregating in there and what have you, and their resources were getting extremely busy over there. So I'm saying we should go to Washington and Shannon. I did drive by Shanahan Field yesterday. I did see a group of probably, I don't know, at least 15 kids kicking the ball around. I think we should put one sign at each park saying park closed and wherever we have play equipment to put construction ribbon like they did in Havel. Um, because they're saying the virus can be on the play equipment. I'm not saying it's there, but get all the toys out of the Washington, bring it to the highway, store them, be a little more proactive, and just put one sign at each park. I don't think you know, if people want to go in there and do passive recreation, they can. But I mean. Well, I think the police need to be vigilant too. They have been. Yeah. They've been very good. Yeah, yeah. They need to be checking on yeah. all the, the gathering places in town to make sure nobody's gathering. Yeah. So right. I think we need to make a motion for that. Okay. You want me to make a motion? Sure. Yeah. Make a motion that we put up signs for all the town-owned property that uh, parks and fields are closed and that we wrap the um, playground equipment and uh, jungle Not gyms with construction tape and that we take the um, loose toys that are at Washington Park and put them down the highway trail. Okay, okay second? Second. All in favor? Discussion. Yep. Okay, discussion. I uh, just want to note, does that include also passive recreation? Are these closed to walkers? Um, no. no. So you can still go out and walk your dog. You can still go out with your son and, you know, walk the street or walk down the field or something, but you can't pick, get a pickup game of basketball. You can't get a pickup game of soccer. You can't send your kids down to Shanahan Field to go play with other kids. Okay, so if father and daughter want to go out and toss a softball around, just the father and daughter, that's okay. That's only two um, people. It's not two people living right. in the same yeah. household. Right. But, in, but they're inside the ball field. I mean, how are you going to decide who gets to get inside? Why not just toss it around in the green space? Why not toss but the it around point in the is, yard? wasn't it under 10? Why do you have to go to the ball field to throw a ball? Can't you just throw the ball at can we catch at home? I mean, I think if we're closing the parks, the the common recreation areas, the playing surfaces are closed. They can walk outside there. Good point. There's yeah, plenty of room. Yeah. And yeah. then that way it's fair. Like if, you know, a family of five gets in the ball field first and then, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, I feel like no, it's a, you're right. a small ask. I think it's a small ask for a, a public safety issue that we're facing. And I think you can throw the ball without being inside the ball field. So you're saying close it for everything? Right, the, the, the playing surfaces. That way the dogs aren't in there, which they're not supposed to be anyway, right? No dogs on Shanahan Field, right? No dogs in the baseball. So to, to that argument, though, I could walk down to the parking lot at the Pines and throw the ball around. 
Sure. I think what, what I'm trying to prevent is a pickup game of baseball. Exactly. If they see two the people throwing a ball, oh, there. look, somebody's having a pickup game. Let's go. Yeah. We don't want that to happen. I kind of feel like that's, my gut is saying that's probably the fairest way to do it, but. Well, you know, in, the you know, in the last meeting, that's when I said we should close the gates to each one of the ball fields. Period. That then that you guys, whoever wants to play ball, would know they can go out in the field, the main part of the they don't go into the ball field. I think that what you guys are saying about the surfaces of the fencing and what have you, yeah. is that what you're saying? Right. Where it's fenced. I don't know. Where it's reserved for, where well, you have it to just reserve to it point. with a permit. Where it has to be that reserved be with closed. a permit. Is yeah. that not good? Yeah, and that should be closed. Those are the, the yeah. playing surfaces yeah. that the, the town put in. Is that too much? Or We'll never know till the end that we did too much. I think we've already I'd said I'd rather err on, err on the too much side than not enough. I don't know how you police that much, that fine, other, you know what I mean? Right, well, yeah. We're, we're, we can walk, but we can't toss a ball. No, you can't either. go in the ball What field. she's saying is she doesn't want anyone no on field. the ball fields. Period. That makes the it ball clear. Field. It's easy. Then it's easy for the Not going through the gates, I guess so, you're saying? So not even passive recreation. Not inside the ball field. There's plenty other field space. So that was my point. You could go down there into the... Parking you lot. can only walk the parking lot. Or you can go to Strawberry Fields and walk a big field. There's no playing field there. There's plenty of woods. You can go walk in the woods. It's a, you know, we have a, the one thing about Groveland is we have a lot, a lot of, of green resources. space. Yeah. We have a lot of green space. So I'm looking forward at, we're all supposed to be doing what little we can. And again, I'm not a health care worker, so there's very little I can do to save lives. And if this helps in some way, sure, because all it is is a ball field and it's a temporary closure. It's not that big a deal, I don't think, right the now. The three of us are all nurses, and we know what to do. And I agree with you, Kathy. Yeah. yeah. I think the ball field should be closed, period. Like you said, you want to throw a ball, there's enough places in Groveland to do it without go into the ball field and have somebody else say, oh, look, it looks like a, b a ball game is going on. I'm going to so stop. So the simple, the simple way of doing this would be, like I had said before, you close the gates at each ball field, lock them until further notice, put the construction ribbon on the play equipment, yep. get the toys out of there, and if they want to go toss a ball in the rest of the place, they can do it. And, and what happens is, unfortunately, we've done our part, but they may walk around, like I said last meeting, they may go around the back, they might get in. We can't, we can't find we through every little seven. thing, no. No. but on the same token, I don't want to make the people, the kids, out in the main roads, and I saw a lot of people, this, they were walking, a lot of people were out walking oh, the roads, they're walking so the street. People. I'm worried about people getting hit by cars and what have you. Right. I don't want to push everyone out into the roads, and then we have people getting hit by cars. But, I mean... We have to give them some place to go. You know what I mean? I agree with what you're saying. It, it's just some form of, you know, my point is, is just some form of normalcy right. during this craziness. Right, I agree. Craziness. Right. Uh, it's especially difficult on the children. They don't get it. It's difficult on us adults. We've never been through it before. Right. Unless someone here has lived through the 1918 school, <laughs> but I don't think so, right? So this is all new to us, and we're all, right. we're all adjusting literally by the hour to, the, to all this. It changes by the hour. Uh, so just to be devil's advocate, right? If two kids start tossing the ball down at the uh, Elm Park, <laughs> two other kids see them. It's a ball game. So, I, I mean... Well, the, you I have to respond? Sure. Uh, I mean, my point um, is that we're doing the steps we can take reasonably. We're not going to make people feel like criminals. And I think it's it's asking for the public's help. It's asking for the for the parents and the children to have a good discussion about what we're trying to do here, um, which is save lives. <coughs> That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to save lives. It, we don't know if it's gonna work, but we're asking everybody to help by not going into the common play area. And beyond that, I mean, you could, I know, you could sit there and devil's advocate this for 45 minutes. Don't want to add, don't and, want to do and, that for 45 and minutes, you know, and I get it, but I'm just saying. I, I wasn't The, 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 the ball me. fields are closed. Forever. Are we going to close Forever. all town property? No. To the, oh, and no. hold them to the same restrictions, no. because. There's a six I, feet, go ahead. Well, I thought 
that the phone call we had the other day was that these that Shanahan Field was closed, Washington Park yeah. was closed, the Pines was closed, and I'm missing one. What's the other Strawberry one? Fields. Oh, Strawberry Fields. I thought they were all closed. To the sports. To yeah. To the or, for the organized sports. But they oh, it was just organized sports. I thought it was well, closed for everybody to be like walking dogs or anything. I thought that was all closed. Um, we were going to say if you're walking through the park but not going on the playing fields, fine. They're trying to make it so that they could, like Bill's talking about, if they wanted to go down there and they wanted to go for a walk past the recreation, or if him and his daughter wanted to go hit a ball. But then if if they hit a ball and more people show up, that's out of our hand. If we yeah. see them, we can say something. If the police see them, they can say something. We can't fine-tune this. You know what I mean? We, we can do the best we can do, put it in place, and that's all we can do. Well, at some point it becomes... The individual's responsibility right. to ask right. for it. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. But that hasn't been happening. Right. So now we're at the point where, you know, how much enforcement do we have to do to force people to act? Well, I know the police were out. Yeah, and they I were know. picking people out. But they out. can't be everywhere. Oh, so I know. That's the, I know. That's the issue. You know, and I, and I said this the other night to, to some people. I'm like, the way that you act affects me. Right. And the way right. that I act affects you. This is not a you, they, them. This is us. Everybody's in it together. So everybody has to act accordingly. And if you're not going to act accordingly, then we're going to have to force you to act accordingly. I mean, that's, the, that's what it comes down to. Uh, one more question. Should we also apply this to DC Park and Nunsville with the snow? I, I wonder if kids are going to want to get sledding. I mean, that's town property, too. I, I don't know if that's been considered, but... If it was a congregating place tomorrow, let's say, devil's advocate, that there was a, a crowd of cars parked there, I think the police would have to clear yeah, them. And it's a town park. Oh, tell them to separate. And that's, that's the other side. Yeah, I mean, but 20 kids slid on none until... Oh, I know, I, I know. I, don't I just wanted you know, be clear so when people call or ask me, I can say, so this is my understanding of what we did, what was said, and this so is what you have to do to comply. I think on both... Of both parties of health and the board of selectmen, I think that they need to comply with the what the governor's saying. No right, more than ten right, people. We're right. complying right here in this room yes. right now. Yeah. So yeah. they cannot comp if they if they're going to be over that amount of people in the yeah. park, it can't happen. But if they're under what the governor's saying and what our upper ups are saying, then whatever. I mean, I, I will tell. I guess the police. I mean, right. They're, if they, they see it, they're going to have to push it. Or, they have to pay a major play a major part in this. The police. Right. I really feel they do. Right, go ahead. No, so I just want to clarify, because twice now the Board of Selectmen have voted to close the recreational areas with the exception of walking and, and people going out for a breath of fresh air. So is that what you're changing now? No. Nope. Because we've nope. put that out that nope. no. the parks nope. are closed. No, well, we're adding this signage yep. and that um, whatever you want to call that tape. Construction okay. tape. Construction tape. It's yeah. caution tape, right? right. It's caution tape. Around the playgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I'm not, I don't think we should be adding walking. I think we should let what we've talked about, we're adding these couple more things to it, and that's it. Okay. Well, I know, but you just said under 10, and, I, you know, we still are, we still are discouraging groups under 10. We're discouraging any sort of groups. No. No. No? And the, we're not discouraging groups under 10? We are discouraging groups. Yes. Okay. And we're certainly discouraging I'm saying discouraging no. We're not asking them to go 10 or more going there. We're just leaving it the way we got it. We're going to add in these two. Okay these couple categories about the tape and, the, and we're going to put the signs at each park and let the officials deal with it then. Well, Go ahead. we're the officials. Yep. Along with the, the police are the enforcement. <laughs> we're the officials. Yep. So, so we have to have some part in this. I mean, and I'm, I'm working from home, you know, for now, depending on how that works out. Um, but it's also going to be on us as the board to help the police, I think, and tell these people, you can't be doing this. This is not part of the any of us order. Right. If I see him, I'd yeah. say it. But yep. I mean, if any of us see anything like that, right. I think we're right. obligated. Right. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, I'm just right. making sure that everyone right. knows that we're the officials. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I think right. it says that. Yep. Yeah, says elected. <laughs> okay. We're the officials. And, and I think Mike makes a very important point. Two people can gather. Two people can be under the limit, but if they're from different households, that's probably not a real good, good idea, idea at this point. Right. If they're from the same household, that's a different thing. I mean, they're living together. Um, just, you know, one, they all have, but uh, people from different households shouldn't want to do it at all. But minimum. No, I mean, I, my in-laws live with me. I don't go over and talk to them, and they're in the next apartment, right? So I walk by my parents' house, and I saw my mom outside. I stay 10 feet away from them. Yep. I don't. Good for you know, you, you got to practice what we're preaching. Exactly. But everybody's got to practice it. Agreed. And right. that's what we're missing with. Everybody's right. not practicing it. So now we have to step up new guidelines for people and really spell it out. Don't do this. 
And I'd say it's not it's not just the police's responsibility. It's it's, it's everyone's responsibility. Well, the parents' responsibilities too. So that's the right. big part of it. I had Hopefully, to. if the parents keep getting this, and, and well, they'll know. We're written. Denise, Denise has it out on tape. So. Hopefully they get it. That's all it, we can do. It took me a while to educate my 13-year-old. Uh, you know, I had to sit him down a couple of times and explain right. to him the, right. the, you know, the dangerous of a situation that he potentially I, puts other people in. I truly do not think, from what I've heard, the people in the world realize how contagious this disease is, or if not disease, virus is. I think they're now catching on how really contagious it is. I mean, yeah. they're finally yeah. catching yeah. on. But I mean, I'm this sure they're. Serious. This is Listen, very I, serious. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I probably had four phone calls from different contractors saying, oh, my God, does that mean we can work? And it, it's on. We have construction pages. They were all saying, you know, on the construction pages, does that mean us, blah, blah, blah. You, a lot of people's lives are being dis upside right, down right, and contractors. Right. Being affected. But the sooner it. everyone gets in compliance, like yeah. Mike's been saying, as soon as we can get this thing shut down, the sooner it gets, we can get back to work. You know what I mean? So, um, so you, had a, you had discussion. I'm all set. Okay, and then all in favor? Okay, good. Good. All right, so then I just want to, as a chairman of the board, and I think I'm not trying to say anything to you guys, I need you guys to realize, and I'm sure you realize it, you guys right now are the key point mm -hmm. to the town of Groveland for this coronavirus. And the and now it's the FEMA. Um, they're a big part of us now. So everything's going to be filtered through them and through you guys. That means money coming back into this town that we're going to be reimbursed. They're going to be constantly sending out um, information to you right, guys. Right. I can't emphasize it enough. And they're going to be looking for information. And I know I had talked to Claire, Claire and Claire was saying, yeah. I need to get in town hall and what have you. We're going to make sure whatever you guys need, we'll make sure we work with you to get it. Right. And if you need help from us, we're here for that, Thank you. to help us. You know what I mean? We're not. I think we should work and, together. And this, what you just said is true. Yeah. If the federal government, if they would all work together, Forget the Democrats, Independent Republicans. This is a crisis. We all need to work together. S put it all aside, and let's all just work together. We'll get this and thing done. Keeping up right. That's everybody's goal, I right. think, is keeping the residents so, safe. Um, yes, right now, and I don't haven't heard anything of Groveland, but I do know Havel's got three, New Report's got three, Boxford. If I may, I think our public health nurse should comment on that because that's not true anymore. What do you mean it's not true anymore? It's not true anymore. There is a positive case in Groveland. Oh, there, Claire? there is. Oh, there is. <clears throat> uh, we were just notified uh, over the weekend of a positive case, and um, the person is doing fine. Um, no symptoms at this point. Uh, has been on house confinement for one week and has another week to go. Um, there are other people in the house, so they're all on confinement too. Can, can I so. Say? This person tested positive, or they yes. had come, yes. but they have no tested symptoms. Tested positive, but no symptoms. Symptomatic initially. Oh, okay. So initially symptomatic. Correct. And what route did they follow? He did actually he follow? actually went to a total of three places to get tested. Okay. The first two places wouldn't test him because I think probably because they don't have enough testing kits, so they were being very cautious, but. You know, I mean, his symptoms were significant. He should have been tested okay. and right, I think right at the get-go. That somehow all the doctors out there need to realize that people go to them. They now, the doctors need to say, go to the testing facility. They have one right here in Havel, et cetera, et cetera. Need well, doctor's you need a doctor's, doctor's order, order right, right. to go there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So what is the process then? Let's say somebody in Groveland has a family member and he says, don't, don't feel well. What should they do step-wise? Call their doctor. And what should they expect their doctor to do for them at the, on that call? Well, they're going to listen to the symptoms they're having, yeah. okay, and decide from there whether they need to be tested or not. Okay. And because we have a tent over here at the hospital and there's more and more places that have been set up for testing, so it's a lot easier to get a test. And there's supposed to be quite a few kits coming out um, they're me being made up and sent out all over the country so it should be easier to get tested okay and you know, I mean I feel like the more we know the lower the level of anxiety so they call their doctor their doctor says yes you should get tested will the doctor tell them 
where to go, or are they going to just give them a list? They have they have to give them an order, okay? Mm -hmm. So they can call in the order. Oh, I get okay. it. Oh, like when you go into the it's, lab. It's yeah. just like for the lab. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. You're getting blood work. That's what's doing the test. The labs are doing I, the I test. Don't, your language is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember that. You're talking that. Speech. Sorry. <laughs> um, so they will give Quest, you Quest here is uh, doing tests. Um, and like I said, there's, there's a lab over in Lawrence, okay, set up. I'm not sure if it's a test. I mean, a tent like we have over here in Haverhill, or it's well, a separate little yeah. building. Yeah. yeah I think they do. Um, and, I you know, I'm... Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I wanted to hear the whole process. So then they, you put the order in, so you will be told which place to go to because the order will be there? You know, um, they probably would ask the patient where they wanted to go. Okay. 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 Just kind of like the pharmacy, you know, when you go to your doctor's office and... They write say, I'm going to get, write a script. Where do you want, want me to send it? Okay. Okay. And then you go and they do the test. I've seen the test. And then, and then you wait uh, for the lab reports to come back. And they'll be coming back sooner now than later yes, yes. Uh, because they were sending them across country at the beginning. Oh. So that's why it was taking almost a week. Okay. So that wasn't good. A um, lot of calls coming in, um, you know, there were a couple of calls from the Bagnell School early on and, uh, of course, Pentucket School. Uh, Joan and I went to a conference there with the um, administrators and the surrounding Board of Health nurses. So, um, you know, we were all on the same page. That was basically what that was all about. So that was good. And, you know, some private people have called. Um, well, most of your work is in the lab telephone. Really? A lot yeah, of it. Lot and, of it. you know, nurse, nurses off. can do a lot of triaging <laughs> over the phone. Yeah. I mean, it's great yeah. because I don't think any of us want to go into a house that no. is suspected, no. you know. Um, so you can triage anything over the phone. Yes. But at what point do you become part of the process? So that right now it's only been the person, their doctor, and the test. Well, we, we get the report back through this reporting agency called MAVEN, okay. which comes from the state, okay? And then we record it here, um, you know, like I spoke to the, the person that's infected here yesterday, and, um, you know, I'm just going to write everything he said, and, you know. But do you get a report the minute they get tested or when it becomes back as a positive? As a positive. Okay, so then okay. you're given a contact person, a person to contact? Their information is on the website for MAVEN, okay. which is a closed system, okay? Yeah. It's not public knowledge. You, HIPAA. you know what HIPAA is. Yes, I yeah. do. I just yeah. told you. Yeah. So, um, but when you get the information, are you calling to get more information from them, like to see who they were last with, or is that being handled outside of our town? That's what I'm just trying to understand. Um, no, I would I would ask them who they had contact with, if they knew who they were, uh, when it was, uh, what happened happened to them symptom wise. Mm -hmm. Okay, do they have a fever? Were they nauseous? Do they have any pain? Um, you know, whatever out of the ordinary that developed, I'd want to know, okay. okay? So it can be documented and recorded. And, you know, when people call and they're at a total loss, they're, they're not symptomatic, they just want to know, you know, and this is a quote almost, what's the town doing for us? Uh, <laughs> where are the test kits? Well, we're not testing them. That, that was early on, you know, and um, I, I frankly had to say, you know, you've got to follow things through the CDC and Massachusetts Department of Health, okay? Go online. I don't have a c computer. Well, can you get one or can you access someone else's? Yes. I said, go online every single day and check the, t the statistics and see if it's around the area, um, you know, and it's the best you can do, you know, and um, kind of calming people down. Yeah, that's major. Okay, 
and do you do follow up with the person once they're having it to see how they're yes. Okay. Yes. So All by phone. phone. So they're All not by phone. phone. Okay. <laughs> no, no, obviously. And then at what point are they allowed to be tested to see if they're negative? I don't think they I'm do not, I don't think they no, retest. They I, no, 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 I haven't heard anything no. about retesting. Like it's like a 14 day thing and then you're yep. and then you should be, be yep. okay. Going you to should be yeah. you should be fine. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, obviously if the system the system's got worse in the 14 days you're going to end up in the hospital. You're going to wind right. up in the hospital, yeah. right. you know, and um, over the weekend I heard that um, the automakers in uh, Michigan, you've probably heard this too, are going to start making ventilators. Yeah. And um, what was it in Rhode Island? What are they making? Um, Kits mm, or masks? Um, masks. Masks. I, I saw the woman sewing the. You see that? Well. Yes. Really? Yeah. Honeywell, a company yeah. out of Providence. Um, so they're going to do masks. All right. So Thank Mike. You, sir. And I, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, we were um, able to secure $5,000 from the state by a grant. Um, Denise and I worked on it uh, rather quickly um, in less than 24 hours <laughs> and got it into the state. And the state answered us just like that, and they approved it just like that. I'm not sure how fast the money's coming, but I, it doesn't sound like it's going to be very long. No, they asked you to write the check out to you today, so I'm assuming they're cutting it quite quickly. So, oh, wow. to clear, that being said, I'm sure we're going to be here more. Keep an eye on all your expenses, the board's expenses, anything that the town, the you know, the police will have to do with the fire, anything that that pertains to this, we're supposed to get reimbursed, is what I heard. Right. 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 The, more uh, money the coming. I yes. Think. Right. The accountant uh, <laughs> sent out spreadsheets. Yeah to all of us that are involved in this yep. last week. So okay. I haven't done mine yet. but right. <laughs> I know Mike wanted to say something. Uh, yes, Mike. You said that you were notified this weekend of a positive case, mm -hmm. correct? Did you notify any of the officials for the police department, the fire department? The Denise, police were notified them? today and the... Um, today, but when... I actually didn't realize that, okay, so... That was that was on me, um, but well, I, talk, I at, talked right? to both chiefs. If you have a chiefs. case on, you know, this street number five, and all of a sudden the police have to go there for some kind of no, I, I understand the whole situation. I, I just didn't think of them, okay, at the time. A and well, I it's a, it's I, a total learning curve. I know, I know the police had changed their protocol. Um, that they're going to be more cautious going into homes. They're um, actually not going to go in the homes. The fire department's going to respond and go into the homes, right. as well as uh, EMS. Right. Okay. Um, go ahead, Bill. Just one quick question, uh, Mr. Walsh. The, um, the people once they test positive in Groven, do you try to trace back their contacts? I'm sorry if this was asked before. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Do you try to trace back their contacts as best as you can? So yes. That um, and has that been done in this case? Yes. I haven't been notified, so I guess I don't know him, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, she's got to call you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let me think what else I had here. Um, we talked about the equipment. Um, n obviously, nothing's going to stop the people in town from, from walking the roads and getting fresh air and what have you. We're going to have to be, probably the police will have to be more on that and be careful of the people like I said crossing the roads or whatever but I did see a lot of people out walking I've never and they seen were so out, many people out walking they're walking their dogs and everything and I mean none of them seem like they're doing anything wrong but I think people just want to get out no sidewalks seven yeah. star road and um, governor's road there's no sidewalks so so to help we don't have a lockdown in place no we're not so no, I'm just I know I know. um and then this is more um the Council on Aging in the Elderly, is anyone, do we know how that's going, anyone, as far as if they're going to be able to help or do they, they have any part of this or at all? Or? Well, they're doing their own outreach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're dealing with it on their own. Um, Can I yeah. ask a question, Bill? So um, I don't know if you guys, the Board of Health, have read the full governor's statement from today in his declaration, but it puts a lot more responsibility on the Board of Health to enforce his orders. So are you 
comfortable with the resources you have being able to enforce all of their, um, I guess, everything that's being prohibited, um, even as far as like the on-premise consumption of food and alcohol. And I just want to make sure that you are okay with. I'm all over it. Okay. Um, okay, I just want to make sure that because it puts an awful lot of responsibility on the Board of Health in their declaration today. Yellow claims you in phase two. You put the chairs and the tables against the wall. Okay. So nobody can hang out in the restaurant. Is someone going to be out, like, police in the area for that? Or, or at least making at least one loop through to make sure it's I done? I do it okay. like crazy. Okay. And everybody right. kind of knows. All right. When I'm <laughs> coming. Um, Thank you. How about uh, they're not gathering for food or alcohol, but they're that gathering for keynote? All part of that. Yeah. Oh, what? Keynote. Oh, that's closed out of town. I know nothing not about keynote. But what? with some well, of these. It's over at Jerry's, right? Keynote's is a game. Right, but it's over at Jerry's. It's over at Jerry's, and it's at uh, the tea garden as well. Oh, is it there too? Okay. Yes. So while they not be, might not be drinking and eating there on the establishment, I'm sorry. if they're gathering there to play Keno, it's just as bad, right? I would think Keno should be closed. I was just going to say the same food. thing. Nobody, there's no chairs in all these places. Nobody in the restaurants right. order them for takeout, so yeah. they shouldn't be in the store. Hanging yeah. around, right? right. Yeah. Well, I'm just asking That's because... Jerry's, Jerry's. Jerry's has put all their... Tables and chairs. So they closed that part off. That's right. closed off. I didn't know. Specifically, you can go no in there and see, you know, going going people right. same thing. The pub playing Keno and they're waiting. Pub yeah. 97 is Keno. So they should do the same thing. They, they can should fill it out. They should have they no place for people to sit. Stay. Just come in, get your food, and go. No place to sit. Um, now, as far as meetings, uh, you're going to, I, I assumed you were meeting only once a month before this. You plan on meeting much more regularly, once a week, or? Oh, we can. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think during this time, I think that you should meet with us. Yeah, we meet right. right. Yeah. We're meeting we're once meeting a week now. every yeah. Monday. Yeah, this is so unusual circumstance. Right. So we're going to keep meeting every Monday. If if the, for some reason there's no That's reason for a meeting, then we'll cancel. But I think time, every Monday, four thirty every Monday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So one thing I I did want to say is kind of a little bit different, but um, I have a daughter. I'm kind of involved, Claire, in the hospital. Yeah. Um, the nurses over there were asking for masks. There were four days on their mask, et cetera, et cetera. So I had called um, Fuckwoman Castanellis and Fuckman Bill O'Neill, um, asked them if they could help me out. Um, the um, talk to the police chief actually had called me and said, what can I do to help you? I was mentioning it to him. He got us 40 masks with respirators. All right. um, we got the gloves from through the Pawtucket High School. Yes. Uh, there's, there's a case of gloves I'm going to get over there tomorrow. Um, Whittier had, had all. Promised everything. <laughs> they had already given everything up over to the Lawrence General Hospital. Yeah. So a few things are starting to filter through, but this afternoon I had a conversation with Chesterton. Um, I can't pronounce his last name. Mark, whatever. They're gearing their company down to basically essential work for the chemicals for these certain machines that have right. to run this equipment that's making this stuff. So I had talked to him. He said he's going to look around, see what he can come up with. He's not guaranteeing anything, but um, he uh, said he'd do what he can do. So number one, as a chairman of the board, I'd like to thank everyone involved, Bill, Kathy, the chief, and every, you, everyone. And it, it, what everyone's putting together, we're, we're going to get this done somehow. Um, I don't really have much more. I think, like I said, one thing I wanted to say was with us all here, people are going to be in their homes. So if they're in their homes, fix the fire extinguishers. You know, do right. all the safety right. equipment. You're going to be in there more. Make sure do, everything works. Do your batteries. And make sure everything's safe and good. If you're going to be in there, you're going to be using the house more. That, that That's one way you can Excellent. put your energy in your home um, and get everything up to snuff that way. I don't know of anything else I have to say unless someone else here wants to say something. You guys? No, we're good. I just think our continued cooperation and communication between our two boards at mm -hmm. this point in time is so Crucial. vitally important. Crucial. Um, good news, bad news, as long as it's it's the facts as we know them, at, as, as we know them at that time, are just crucial to get out there to the public um, so they can make their decisions based on the best information that we have, too. Um, so I want to thank you all for your, your time and your... Uh,
I, I know it's going to be some sleepless nights ahead. There's no doubt for all of us. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I agree. Yeah. So yes, uh, thank you all in advance for the nights you're not going to sleep <laughs> for the next couple of months and for the time you're going to put in here thank uh, you. with us over the next. And thank you. Hopefully yep. just a few no weeks. Okay. This is good? the time to work together. It's yep. crucial. Yep. You got it. All right. um, does anyone on the board have anything they want to talk about the rest of our board meeting? Are we good? Or? Hey, Libby, th thank you. Uh, you have it's good to hear that you know, we have all this oh, you uh, experience on this board. I, mean, I feel Do good we need to be here for FEMA? No. Um, well, I don't, we, if he wants to just step in the doorway, not come in the room, does he have well, anything? Have somebody, somebody has to leave, step out. Yes. Someone yeah. should really step out of the room if all he's right. going to come in. Okay. All right. Well, I, why doesn't, yeah. Lori's going. Bye, Lori. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Are you all set? Okay. I can also work on most of the parks. Sit down. Joe, you need to speak in the microphone, please. I can use that as another <laughs> stop to okay. make sure nobody's abusing it. Okay. Thank Great. You. Are you going to sing, Joe? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Steve? Thank you. Hello? 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 He's, he's been hanging out oh. there. over here. We got right. him. Thank you. Does he have a microphone, Denise? Does not. Does he know he's talking? <laughs> well, I'm just going to. You probably heard a lot of what went on, Steve. So, yes. One thing that we are saying is how important that the health, FEMA, and this board is going to be through this situation. Anything that you need, we're here to help you. Um, anything to help you need from the health, we're all going to work together and we're going to get through this all. Yeah, I was just uh, talking with Lori. I sent her an email over today. Right now, it's going to be just the different types of stuff to keep track of because once this is all said and done, FEMA will be giving us a representative like we did at the last snowstorm for all the reimbursement stuff. And the more stuff we have all in place already, makes it a lot easier. We, I went through it with Denise in the last ones, a lot of filtering and getting stuff, but we kind of have a, you know, an outline of the type of stuff that's going to be reimbursable. So the more we keep track of that, the easier it will be on the other end of getting the town back as much money from active measures. So the police, fire, and board of health, any expenses they have related to the response preparation to the virus that's going around right now will be reimbursable. I have a question. Yeah. So um, when it comes to the Board of Health, it, will it be like obviously materials that they can get, but will we also be paying for the additional health nurse hours? Yep. If, if yes. Health agent yes. hours? We already, yeah, okay. Yep. Went, we yep. already checked that out. Steve has his hand up, so. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so that was the $5,000 that the Department of Public Health granted us. Claire and I sat down and figured out um, so many more hours a week for her, so many more hours a week for Joe to do his inspections, and then supplies. So right now, for the next few weeks, we're covered with the additional funding that was already given to us. Yes, but we still track it. No Everything still has to be tracked. covered or not, right? Yep. Going forward. Oh, definitely. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Going forward. Well, that's why it's just that awesome. Great. So I have a quick question. I don't know. Hopefully this is all going to pedal out and whatever. If it got to the point where, for some reason, a lot of, areas and now bringing the National Guard in and what have you, who would handle that from us? Would that be you or would it be the police, the fire? How would that all be dealt with? Uh, the National Guard stuff comes in through the governor's office. Okay. So they're the ones in charge of it. So if you wanted to use them for something, we'd have to request it okay. up through the chain of command and then they could say, okay, yeah, okay. we can designate them And where would they start this. from if it got to that I, Well, it would start with me and then I'd forward it up to Mimi and then okay. Mima would forward it to okay. the governor. So you'll be working with us. Um, throughout the whole process. I, not that it, yeah. it's a little town of Groven, but you never know, you know what I mean? Just that we had the conversation because a lot of people hearing it on TV right now and what have you. Yeah, a lot of the resources that you might need, MEMA's got agreements through a lot of different stuff, so if there's anything that down the road we need, just let me know what it is and I can filter it through the channels and get it here. Okay. Do you guys know of anything you need at all right now? Uh, I don't think so. We've got everything we need, right, Claire? Well, we you know, our, our first thing is to get more equipment to have on, you know, backup. Yep. Because, you know, we have some things, which is great, but we don't know what we're going to go through. Okay. You know, so 
if you, I know I was with the chief yesterday, and he gave me the mask. He gave me what he could. He told me he's starting to get down. I know I had talked to the fire chief when I called him initially to try and get the nurse or something. He said, I can't give any more of my stuff out. I'm, I'm, I'm where I need to be. So maybe you can compile what you think we need or talk to the fire police or whatever, compile what we need. We, we figured that out. Okay, we you got figured it all that done. out. All right. Okay. okay. Um, not as much for the police because they're not actually going into okay. the house. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, for community, because you are a one-man public health nurse and woman, uh, can you work remotely if that were to occur? Can you work? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, there's a lot of interruptions at my house. You know? oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that I could live with that, but I'm just saying, do you have the uh, the internet? Technical the capability. The, the oh, yes. Tech, so yeah. you, ha you can access the websites, programs, everything you need. So if for some reason they told you to go home for 14 days, because <laughs> you know, you know. She can take over. I said we're all nurses. She can. You could take over her. Y'all could, yeah. And if, she, if she couldn't get out, if she couldn't. Would, leave. He, would he have to appoint, or would that just no. happen? No, no. The board of health just does that. Yeah, we're autonomous. Oh, okay. That's and, and you have access to town hall. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it would take all of you guys getting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just three of us are on it. Okay. Okay, okay. okay good. Great, thank you. All right, okay. anyone else? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Steve, worst case scenario, what, um, what kind of what kind of items can the state or town be counted on to deploy? Field, hospitals, um, OPD, uh, you know, what, what, what could we count on in worst case scenario? It all depends on what you need for the town. You know, it would be more the field hospitals and stuff like that if it got to that level, which I don't see it getting anywhere near that level. Both but that good. would be a regionalized thing. That wouldn't be Groveland. They'd set up, because they don't have enough to supply that in every yeah, community like in Essex Massachusetts. Yeah. Right, there'd be one for Essex County that would be set up. And as for the PPE, the masks and stuff like that, that they, it's all prioritized. So if we send in a request for this, they'll look at what we need them for. And then, you know, they've only got a limited supply. They got a good supply of them. But if, you know, they just divvy it so like the hospitals get it and then the towns get it from different. So you answer your question, the easy way is yes, we get it. It's just who we get it from. It just, you know, is a little bit in the works and they figure that all out. Second quick question. If the hospitals in the area were potentially to run out of beds, could and would the schools be converted to um, house less serious uh, non-infected patients for short periods of time, such as they're using, um, the York is using yeah. what? One Conference of their, center. Yeah, the, the, the one of their <laughs> convention centers to house house. Patients that are non-positive but still need some sort of medical care. Uh, is, is that is that possible? I, I'm not. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. That would be more for the oh, board yeah. of health and the state out. level to figure it out because you get the disinfecting of the schools afterwards to bring right. your students right. back. So right. I don't know if a school would actually be an ideal place I, that you want to use for something like that. I really can't see a like school, that. you know, say like Pentucket or the bagnole being used for anything like that because like Steve is saying, you know, you've got to disinfect everything. Non COVID nineteen patients. And they don't need to be hospitalized. But then yeah. well, they don't they hospitalize the hospitals anybody. Are people right now that need to be hospitalized, but they don't necessarily have COVID nineteen, right? But so are you gonna have oxygen? Have the you you're gonna yeah, have a right. lot of equipment to do this. And I think it goes back to that we can't use our schools as shelters because we don't have the right shower mm -hmm. and things like that. Exactly. I think the same would apply as Except far as emergency care. Correct. 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 So Bagnell wouldn't be accessible because we don't have that option there. I know I'm not going to speak on behalf of the hospital, but you work there. <laughs> I've been told there's plenty of room right now there. This hospital and there's other hospitals. I don't, I don't work there now. I no, I know. Worked there for they have closed time. units. Right. right. 
No. We have many calls. Yes. Many calls. Yes. Right. So that's not the situation right now. They're worried about. They're worried more about supplies. Yeah. That's what they're after. Right. Today. But today yeah. they're after I'm, supplies. I'm afraid a week from today they're going to be looking for beds. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It would have to be pretty bad. Pretty bad in yeah. that short period of time. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can use... Uh, Let's hope we don't become Italy or, or New York City right now. It's just it's absolutely exploding exponentially right now in Italy. Okay. All right. We good? All right. Thank you so much we'll for coming in. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Yeah. Okay. Right. Next, yep. week. next week at 4.30. You got it. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else on the no. board have anything they want to talk about? Lisa. Yep. I'm sorry, Lisa. Yes. Sorry. Um, so with the governor's declaration today, uh, we need to discuss the uh, essential personnel versus non-essential personnel. Um, and I will make the statement that while all of our staff is essential in one way or another, um, not everyone reaches the category of essential under the governor's statement or, or closing workplace. Um, so I would recommend um, that starting tomorrow at noontime, the library be closed. All employees should be home. Um, the town planner and conservation agent can work remotely 100%. They're not considered essential under this order. Um, the building inspector, Sam, can work 100% remotely. He does not need to be in the building. He gets his um, emails and voicemails and does his permitting software wherever he is. And then I think other staff should be only in the town hall when it is necessary or if they have to complete any essential tasks. For instance, the town accountant should be in only to get bills done. Um, I think right now, just coming in and doing work to keep them here doesn't meet the essential status. Um, clearly, the essential staff is police, fire, highway, and water and sewer are considered essential myself, obviously, um, but I don't need to do everything here, so I can work here and at home. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there that beginning tomorrow at noon when this order goes into effect, there will be much um, fewer staff in the building. Uh, still, I would say put the responsibility on the department heads to make sure the essential tasks are getting carried out. If they need to assign staff to come in for a couple hours here and there, that should be up to the department head to uh, manage their staff. Again, we're a small organization. We only have one person per most offices. Um, so, so. Well, can we request like a special visit for there's multiple offices that we those people that need to come in, they have to do whatever task it is here, stagger the times that we limit contact so that if for some reason somebody does go into quarantine, we don't have to quarantine, you know, three of our offices at the same time. I mean, it's simple. You know, so does, does the accountant need to be here the same time as the assistant treasurer? Um, no, but they, I mean, they are in separate offices. Um, so the good thing is... Same well, right. Everybody's using the same yeah, bathroom. Yeah. The, same. the same door to enter the building. If you have it, you get on the door handle. You got it. So I mean, right. You know, if it lives for up to six days, it might have to be out for six days before you could use the bathroom again. Right. So we just have to hope it's clean very well. Right. But I just feel that you increase your exposure the more often you see the same, you know, people. Yeah. No, no offense, people, but you know what I'm saying. If possible, stagger the, the times that people in common buildings. So like. Water and sewer, they have to have someone come and check the wells, right? So how many people need to come in to do that? Right. So with the, with the water and sewer, the wells are, they have a, per, a person that does it each day. So they're dedicated to one person doing those tasks. Um, some of the hard part, though, is, um, you know, payroll and accounts payable, it's on the same schedule because they have to get them done for your meetings on Monday. So there's a lot of overlap on those two. Um, again, they're in separate offices, so we can certainly limit... Um, the rest of the building, but if the majority of the people are home anyways, you're only talking a handful of folks that will be in here at one period of time. So I think we can certainly ask that they stagger, um, but there are so many tasks that happen at the same time that it might be difficult because there's so few of us anyways. And those things can't really be done from home. Well, I would think as long as they practice social distancing, and wash, wash their hands, good hygiene, we have such a, I mean, it's, it's, it's less than a skeleton crew. They, they just, you know, all the bones aren't even on the skeleton. Right. So how many offices in this town building are we going to close and not allow people into? Um, so 
fully close, I mean, the library, yeah. um, planning and conservation. Uh, I have to talk to Lynn in the Council on Aging. I think she can do most of her stuff remotely. I don't know that she needs to physically come in, but I'll talk to her about that. Um, so the building inspector's office will be closed. Um, assessing will be closed mostly, but again, it's time of year with taxes and getting ready for July. So she's got stuff that she has to meet deadlines for. And then uh, water and sewer, the town clerk, you know, she, there's deadlines that she needs to meet. So she might need to come in during the week a couple times. Um, and then my office really with um, taxes have to go out, payroll has to get done. So once we get taxes out, uh, then at least that part of the office is really every two weeks for payroll. So we can collect taxes remotely. We can process those payments remotely. Uh, it's just the physical mail that will come in that, you know, we can come in. And um, I plan to still come in more regularly just to be in the building and keep an eye on things. Um, so maybe not full days, but I'll be in as much as... The simpler way of doing it would be to close the town hall to a point where it's operational only but close it down to where it's operational to the point where whatever we need to need deadlines, but right. just close the rest of it down. And, and what are we gonna do with the highway? I mean, I know that said on the thing, the highway can remain open. Right, so highway, water and sewer, they're considered um, essential. Y you know, it's up to you. If you wanna limit their time more than we've already done as of last week, that's up to you. I don't know that, you know, we could certainly leave them on for emergency purposes. Everything else, you know, what's a priority right now? You know, are filling potholes a priority? Obviously, if it snows, they need to come in and it's plow snowing. and things like that. But, you know, how, where do you want to draw that line? It's up to the board if you want to. You can restrict it more than the governor's orders, but he is declaring those services um, essential. So I agree that we'll close, but again, there are certain things in each, in a lot of offices that need to be done. So people will need to come and go, but it will be a Whatever minimum it takes after to run tomorrow. The town hall minimally. Yes. Minimally. Yes. It will be at a minimum after as tomorrow. As far as the time. highway goes, I mean, I know they're not in here; they're on the roads. But there is situations where the the potholes are going to need to be filled because it's that time of year and what have you. Um, but they're not big groups, though, right? No, it's there's what four or five or three, of them. Two or three. Two or three right. in a crew. So right. I mean, they so should maybe, be safe. May, they're not going to be terribly busy because what's going on on the streets and what have you. So maybe they can stay on they're not going to be terribly busy. They're not going to be out doing the project. So, I mean, what, have them stay on, but they're going to know they're not busy. I mean, then they basically, I would think, I mean. Right. So do you want to, when it comes to water and sewer, when it comes to the laborers, water and sewer and highway, uh, water and sewer have less to do because they're not going in people's homes. They're not doing any of, they're not changing out meters. Right. Um, they have to come in every day, but that's only one person has to come in every day. You know, right now they're, working on the building on School Street. They're doing some other stuff around town, but there's not a lot for them to do because they're limited. Um, you know, we, again, we can certainly cut down the hours so they're still here, but not as much. Well, even, it's up to you. I, but, but even with the highway, I'm sure there's projects on their equipment. I wish we could do it, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to. But there's, there's certain things maybe in their equipment they can get caught up on and, and that kind of stuff, and, and they're going to be a little lower key if they're needed. They're there. They can go. You know what I mean? Um, maybe it's up to the board. I mean, the same with the with the water, the, the building needs to be done. I mean, I'm not saying we're trying to be unfair to them and say they have to work and these other people don't, but um, totally right, but the, the situation. And the expectation is the other people are working, from you know, home. from home as much right. as they can. Unfortunately, right. laborers can't work from home. Right. Um, right. You know, we all know Rebecca can work from home. She did it during her maternity leaves. She can right. do everything she needs to do remotely. Right. Right. Um, same thing with the building inspector. So they're not, again, on vacation. Right. They're not just taking time off. They are working, just not in this environment. Right. So, I mean, we can see how it goes. We have another meeting on Monday. Uh, yeah. If you want to revisit it then and see how the first week went, yeah, we can well, certainly do that. I, I suggest we wait a week and see okay. how that goes and okay. see what happens. Great. I mean, I just, from my perspective, if there is, if it's better for them to work more limited hours to protect public health, then we'll limit the hours. I mean, we need to figure out the answer to that question. It's not really about an hour for hour, dollar for dollar right now. We're in a very short period of curtailing a lot of our activities. So if they're just sitting around in an office, is that what we want? Which they, you know, then they go home to another set of people at home. Yeah, I'm just saying, I thought that I know, the but governor's the instruction is for as much as possible to try to isolate ourselves, which we are doing, and it's, it's painful, but we, but we have to do it. 
Um, so if we want to revisit it Monday, we can. I mean, with some feedback from the department head on on what what that's what I was could wondering. be actually done while they're around, because I certainly don't want them just needlessly sitting there right. punching a clock. That's that's a waste of their time. It's also not following what the what the state has asked. But them I to think do. he, I think the state has said they're essential. Am I correct? This, on the state's list, they are determined to be essential employees. Well, I think for emergency, because they are. I mean, if something goes wrong and we need, like, something right. done because the tree comes down or something. Exactly. That's who we need. So are they supposed to have a skeleton crew on duty for that? Well, that's all we have in our department anyway, right? A skeleton right. crew. Right. It's right. a very small department. Right. So other towns with larger departments are either staggering their workforce and having, you know, couple people on today, some on tomorrow, so that they're not all working the same day, or they've gone to a skeleton crew. As we've discussed, we already operate a skeleton crew <laughs> everywhere. Just We're just limited with our staff. So you can't really stagger when you have either three or four people. There's not enough to spread around. Um, and then I would say just keep in mind that one of our department heads is self-quarantining because he was away. So, um, so we're down to how many now? Just so there's four in the highway department. and three plus the superintendent in the water and sewer department, so, if you include the superintendent. Well, okay, so the, in the highway department, though, now we just have three people showing up to work? No, there's four laborers. Four laborers. Four, three laborers, and Billy is the mechanic and okay. foreman. So on Monday, we could consider going to two and two if you wanted to, but it's up to you. Just a quick question. At this time of year, what would the highway department crew normally be doing? I would think that would be getting ready for spring, tuning up their mowers, getting their equipment ready. I mean, I would think they could still do that in a somewhat isolated manner uh, while still performing, you know, moving forward in some respect while still. I don't think we should put them out in the road in the harm's way of people. It's shut down pretty much out there anyway, but they're there if we need to have them fill potholes. You know, you know what I mean? Like you said, if they're there to get the equipment up to snuff, um, what, 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 what would, if this wasn't going on today, what would they normally be doing? Getting ready and for spring. Well, why can't they do that? Right, uh, well, I think, though, you know, with the equipment, it's, I think it's all Billy. Billy's the mechanic, so he does all the tune-ups and gets all the equipment ready. Um, you know, if this were last week, the guys would be out cutting the grass and thatching. Now it's snowing, so they're not going to be out doing that. Um, they are going around, they're filling potholes, they're working on the catch basins. I mean, they, they, they do have regular stuff to do. Aren't we going to um, have them do the tape around the yeah, in the right. toilet today. But right. that won't right. take yeah. long. Right. So, again, we can let it go for the week and revisit. I can get updates from them on Monday or Friday and uh, it, or yeah, right. Monday. Yeah, you can have space, but I know it. it's not always only Billy. He does a lot of technical stuff, but they're all about very talented people. If there's something in there that, that they need to get done, I'm sure they could get it done. But, I mean, maybe they're going to come back to us and say, listen, we don't, we're all caught up. I don't know. I don't know the whole situation. Well, everybody's got a special project that's been right. putting on I the background. I don't know. Like time. I said, I don't know um, if you want them out there playing with swing sets and repairing stuff, that kind of stuff. On the outside, it, you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Tape it up and get out. Right, right, right. Okay. And then right. go back and some gloves, tape it right. out. You guys Make sure they have all the safety there, equipment they need to do that job. And the mower there. And right. You know, they're, not gonna, they're probably not going to get the parts they need on some of the stuff because a lot of the parts places are now closed and what have yeah. you. But I think we'll have the conversation and try to figure it out by next Monday. Okay. All right. Is everyone good? Yeah. Denise, are you good? Yep. So before you adjourn, so next Monday will be, um, we'll start the meeting at 430 with a COVID-19 discussion, and then we are going to go into our regular meeting, but it's going to just be the budget and town meeting. We're going to continue. Um, I will, um, we can start the dialogue at the next meeting about the election and town meeting. Um, I think it's still too soon to make any decisions. Other communities that are postponing are still postponing right before our town meeting, so, but we can start discussing that. Um, but I think we should start voting on the budget and the Warren articles as if we're moving forward. So that's all that will be on the agenda. I'm not going to add any of the regular stuff. It's going to really be COVID-19 and budget workshop stuff. Is that okay with everybody? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we can handle at this point. Right. And then, so that'll be the next two because we're meeting the 6th for the budget to finalize everything, depending on when the town meeting is. But um, so that way we can get good, get through a big chunk of it next week. Okay, that's all I have. Motion to adjourn at 541. Second. All in favor?